Good afternoon, all. Uh, it's a pleasure and privilege to be here. And thank you very much uh, to Cornelius and all the organizing team for such a fantastic event. And also, many thanks to um, Catherine for, for mentioning our ranking. It's truly humbling. And um, of course, we are honored. Um, so let me see how I can make this work. We have a few slides. Um, very briefly, a few words about us. Um, we are not a market intelligence firm. Actually, we are a transaction advisory firm. We are financial advisors revolving around the project finance toolkit. Um, we help infrastructure projects typically raise debt. And um, yet, um, and a few words perhaps just around that, um, a few things that perhaps distinguishes us is we are independent. Uh, with the, we are employee owned and we live or die therefore by the quality of the advice we give. Uh, we are quite senior heavy. A lot of us are former bankers uh, from blue chip institutions. And um, we have been quite active in the uh, energy transition space. Uh, we are the incumbent IJ Global Financial Advisor of the Year for MENA for 2020. Um, firstly, the history. So we started, we identified the clean hydrogen space as a growth um, path for us about two years ago on the back of um, various social discussions for years and years with Frank. Um, and finally, uh, the penny dropped um, from our perspective. Uh, we started uh, dedicating about 10-15% of our bandwidth to that. And uh, one of the key things, of course, is where do you start? What countries do you focus on? Where do you go to? A lot is being published by IEA, by BP, by the Hydrogen Council, et cetera, et cetera. Not always homogeneous. And, um, we saw that there was a clear lack um, in relation to that synthesis of, um, let's say, what are the fundamentals and what are the comparisons like for like. So we decided notwithstanding our modest size to have a go at uh, producing this country ranking. Um, we dedicated, again, a significant portion of our time over the last six, seven months to come up with something uh, we iterated it. We teamed up with um, an energy accelerator down uh, in Australia called Energy Estate, um, which is led by Simon Curry, a former uh, senior lawyer, uh, who is one of the movers and shakers of this space. And, um, and out we came. We published this about two weeks ago. Um, and what was important for us is to make sure that we focused not so much on the buzz, but on the fundamentals. So what matters is what we uh, thought about. And we tried to distill that in um, key criteria. Um, again, we were not solving for perfection. Uh, we are solving for accelerating the discussion and the understanding. We are going to keep reviewing and republishing this um, every six months or so. We'll be announcing uh, an advisory board, some of the members of which are present here today. Um, and we look forward to indeed uh, thoughts and suggestions. We are not saying that this is perfect or this is final. Of course, we published it um, early in November and we were already taken over by events since then. And uh, probably uh, if it were done today, this will look very slightly different around the edges, but broadly speaking, it will be there or thereabouts. Firstly, let me start with the criteria. So uh, the criteria, we decided um, what's the most important between, I guess, the quality and uh, quantum of the renewable resource in a given country and the regulatory um, support regime that is taking shape or that is already there. Those were the, in our view, the key uh, drivers. In addition to that, we felt local demand is pretty important. Frank mentioned it. I think, of course, uh, it makes eminent sense that in time, this will be internationally traded, but to get this going, local demand uh, that is affordable and that is willing and able and incentivized to switch will be a main driver. Um, transport and storage infrastructure, pretty key. Um, we are actually um, intervening live, supporting live some hydrogen projects. And this is one of the biggest, most challenging topics. Investability is pretty important. Of course, uh, you need to make sure that cost of capital is affordable in the country in question. There's no major uh, liquidity crunches, and it should be a country that should be easy to do business with. And finally, we added a bonus for uh, countries that had a degree of energy insecurity. So we feel that especially uh, green hydrogen has a strong element of, um, let's say, um, 
additionality vis-a-vis -vis making sure that energy security is enhanced. So what does the result look like? The result looks like this. And um, indeed, as mentioned earlier, Germany came top. Um, but also, more importantly, what's relevant for this region is two countries in top 20, um, UAE and Saudi. Saudi and UAE, I should say in that order, um, right here, Saudi and UAE. Uh, Oman in top 30, um, Qatar, Morocco in top 40. Um, of course, a strong EU representation in the top 10. Clearly, um, the fact that EU ETS has been such a big success, clearly uh, strong regulatory drivers, um, as well as talk at least about a hydrogen backbone, but also establishment of a beginning of a, a hydrogen um, pipeline of uh, network of pipeline uh, is helping there hugely, in addition to, of course, a significant heavy industry base. Uh, in addition to that, of course, countries like uh, USA, Canada uh, were difficult to ignore given their size, given their industrial base, given their infrastructure uh, in place. In the case of USA, of course, there was also a bit of a bet by us in relation to the Biden plan uh, going through and the hydrogen PTC. Um, again, um, we are not necessarily aiming here for perfection. I'm sure that uh, there'll be loads of um, people who are happy, unhappy. Um, I'm sure that there are things that we have missed and we're really looking forward to an engagement and exchange around that. Um, and um, yeah, here we've summarized some of the um, key features of some of the countries ranking quite high and some of the regions that are quite topical. Sub-Saharan Africa is always close to our heart. Um, of course, we feel that yeah, I mean, it, some of the challenges are still ahead, but um, definitely the abundant solar resource uh, should help. Um, would be very happy to take your questions um, during the break. Uh, but in the meantime, many, many thanks for the opportunity.